Love Line is meant for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. He'd probably close a cut pretty fast, too, if he had to. If I had to. Tonight, we have a couple of guests from The Contender, my new favorite show, Sergio Mo Sergio Morris here and Jonathan Reed. Jonathan was uh, eliminated uh, a few rounds ago, and Sergio is uh, still in the mix, but Jonathan could get back into it if we vote for him and get him on the undercard at the Vegas fight. Is that correct, Jonathan? That is correct. They have to go to contender.yahoo.com mm -hmm. and click on uh, fan favorites and then click on the dot next to Jay Reed and hit the vote button so I can get it crack a lacking. Best, uh, best show on TV, quite easily, quite easily. And here's the thing, and I've said it many times. It's, it's, all, it's, it's good for the same reason all these other Mark Burnett shows are good. The Contender is great, you know, for the same reason that uh, The Apprentice Survivor. is great or Survivor's great. Except for at the end, instead of a kayak race, they beat the F out of each other. That's and best. that's really what you want to see. It's it's really weird, and and what we do in society now is we sort of substitute that feeling, that right. sort of visceral animal feeling of wanting to see the guy clobber the next guy by beating him in some game of strategy right. in the it's board a symbolic room. Symbolic defeat. It's rather. a symbolic yeah. beating. This is an actual beating. It, it's really it, it really just distilled it down. It's sort it's sort of like uh, it's getting closer to gladiator fights. You're it, right. It's <laughs> like you know remember how porn used to have a story, <laughs> and now it's gone. <laughs> You, you just turn the movie on, it's like, pfft, uh, all right, well, that's it, the end. <laughs> that's, that's what this is. This go. is like, screw it, we're not going to pretend. We want to see these guys going at it. And sometimes there's bad blood, and that, that makes it real exciting. And then other times the guys kind of like each other, makes it and it makes it even more interesting. Yeah, yeah, see that. Yeah, now, let's see, Jonathan, who did you lose to? Who was your guy? I lost to uh, Jesse Brinkley, you know, in, oh, in the second week, and, right. and and we we had one of those stories where we we sort of liked each other, right? And uh, when it came time to fight, it was uh, I guess it was kind of hard for, for for me to put that aside, but I, I guess Jesse wasn't paying no attention to it because he, he got in there and, and 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 whipped me and sent me on to the house, man. He's uh, got a got a got uh, heavy hands, as they say in the business that uh, Jesse does, and he he just won last week, right? Mm -hmm. Is that uh, him just uh, beating the number one dad? The number one dad, yeah. Not the number Anthony one boxer. Anthony Bonsante. Yeah, everyone hates Anthony because he's so sincere. <laughs> he cries all the time. I thought they hated Hamed. Oh, they hated Hamed. Yeah, but Hamed they hated in a in a sort of novel way because he yeah. was like a caricature mm -hmm. with the you know mm -hmm. sunglasses. Oh, you and need the, a guy like that. In the preening and the pretty boy and everything. I, I, I think people thought maybe he had his tongue in his cheek a little bit. Uh, the prince that is. But uh, I think Anthony they just think is a uh, actual pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you don't I didn't. I liked him. You liked him? The only thing I didn't like was his uh, that Fargo humor he had. You know, he's from Minnesota, so he had that accent. Yeah. Like, hey. Big nostrils. Like that. <laughs> Big nostrils for a white guy, too. You don't normally yeah, see that. Yeah, that too. Yeah. A lot of air getting through there. That could have stopped him in the fifth round. I'm not sure. The whole glove got stuck in his nostril when he got hit with an uppercut. That uppercut. That uppercut and, was a thing of beauty. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I was saying. What was I saying to you, Drew? What was the, I saying yesterday? A seasoned yesterday? fighter will use an uppercut. Yeah. The newer guys will just wing Swing. and just throw, but the seasoned guys will throw that uppercut in there. You don't see amateurs throwing uppercuts. You don't see the guys with sort of the five and under stuff. But that uppercut, boy, you could sneak it in, mm -hmm. especially right. when someone's getting a little bit tired. Sergio is a crafty fighter, by the way. Oh, he's well, he's long, much. he's lean, but he, he uses his defense. Drew, what else do I say? About Sergio? Uh, anybody. <laughs> about boxing. <laughs> boxing. No, no. I say, you know, you can tell if a, you can tell more about how good a fighter is by his defense than by his offense. I exactly. Mean, anyone, I like, Adam, walk, I like you already. Yeah, am I right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, you always talked about, who was the guy you fought in the ring with, the big guy? Oh, Lamont, Lamont Brewster. Lehman Brewster. Lehman Brewster. He fought with Lehman Brewster, and the way, the way, the way his defense slid off. Yeah, he was yeah. slick for, uh, yeah. for, for big a big guy. For a big guy, he's very slick, But yeah. you could take a guy and, and in two years teach him how to throw punches and move mm -hmm. forward, but it was going to take you 11 years to teach him the defense yeah. part, and that's how you can tell the uh, real pros. So, uh, yeah, favorite show. What's going on this Sunday? 
They can't tell you. Well, can't we can't really anything. say much, but there's four guys left. Uh, four guys I'm left. one of them. Oh. And uh, there's two more episodes and then finale in uh, yeah. May 24th in Caesar's Palace. So we're yeah. all looking forward million, to that. Million bucks. Now, wait a minute. Who got the car? Did you get the car? I got a truck. Man, he got a truck in one of the challenges. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> but he was losing. No, 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 no. no. I got place. it by flipping a card. The challenge was... Oh, uh, that was the other guy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was Joey. Right. Yeah, you got yours in... In, in Las Vegas. In Las I Vegas, that's ace. right. Yeah, first... But they had like, I don't know, six guys standing around in a circle, and they said, uh, look, uh, go up, flip a card, and whoever gets the ace is going to go go home with the forerunner. And Sergio just walked right up and flipped the first card, and ace. it was an ace. Toyota Tundra. Yeah, Pissed right off up. everyone else in the play. <laughs> but you know what the great thing about boxers is they're all, uh, all of them have good hard luck stories, you know? So it's like their dad gets gone, their mom took care of them, they have 170 brothers and sisters, they're all... <laughs> lived in a matchbox <laughs> and then they start crying and then the tears start hey. coming down no it's true though, you don't right? need to be it's a compelling. boxer i think everyone has a story and that's why the contender's so popular because people like, like indirectly the like the story yeah indirectly live through us you know and uh sergio's a uh, local boy he's from uh he's from east uh, la east la yes yeah, sir mm -hmm. well now what gym did you go to when you were i out? started off in montebello a police athletics league and then uh, from there i started up in solid rock and that's still in east la and that's where i train right now Hmm. Whittier Boulevard. And, and you're working out with Jonathan? I'm working out with Jonathan and a couple other guys. Mm-hmm. I see that's a clue to me, Drew. Uh oh. That's a clue that he may have made the final. No, uh, I see. Yeah. Jonathan's out here trying to the thing promote is, himself. You know, I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm out here trying to, you know, promote myself and, and, and put a little extra spunk Let's get into, ready. into Let's my be repertoire. Ready case, yeah. You know, you know, you never know what might happen, so I want to come out here and, and work with uh, you know, one of the best. Yeah. Now it seems more like he made the final. <laughs> <laughs> I think he made the final because he's good. Yeah. Hey, he's uh he's slick. Mich Michelle over here doesn't normally uh, go for the fellas, but I think she'd make an exception in Sergio's case. Am Adam, I, got am here. Am I right? She reacted. Oh, am I right? Big fan, big, big fan. Big fan. Got here, you guys. Slick, slick boxer. The Latin snake. Oh, Latin my snake. God. And it's good. It's good. I like Latin, too, you know? Yeah. Latin snake. It's a good name. Nice. And it's weird because you don't really have it. You haven't really heard it. Yeah. I think it's pretty uh, unique. And uh, whenever I stop boxing, I got a, you know, you mentioned porn. I got another you got career a, there. You got a great name for porn. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will uh, get to the phones oh, this Sunday. This is going to be exciting. Uh, talk to uh, Brittany, who's 18. Brittany? Hi. What's up? Okay, um, well, this is my thing. It's kind of weird, but... Hold on a second. Did you guys see that Corrales fight over the weekend? Oh, my God. Yes, we God. did. One of the greatest fights ever. But... Epic battle. Wow. I mean, epic. And, and uh, you know, the thing about boxing matches is it's <clears> like, <throat> eh, some of them suck. And then once in a while you see one, you'll never forget. Wow. That, this... that, that, that was an example of, of two warriors getting in there, you know, wanting to give it their all and leave it inside the ring. And, and a weird and but uh, effective strategy. Uh, these guys are just going toe-to-toe -to -toe for ten rounds. They're both eyes are closing, cuts, trading. The second you think one guy's got a small advantage on the other guy, the other guy just comes winging back. Toe-to-toe mm -hmm. -to -toe the entire fight. No no clinching, no hugging, no nothing. Just just toe-to-toe -to -toe ten rounds. But one guy seems like he's getting just a little bit the better of the other guy. And toward the beginning of, I guess, the 10th or 11th round, he tags him. Big oh. upper big upper hook. Mm -hmm. Drops him. Just just crumbles to the ground. Oh. Guy, he may not get up, but he staggers to his feet. They start training again, and 10 seconds later, he's down again. And it looks like it's over because the guy's eyes closed. I mean, it's one thing you get dropped in the second round. You still have yeah. a nice uh, coat of carnauba wax on you. Right. But when you're all busted up and you go down, yeah. you ain't coming back up. Uh, it goes down, but he spits his mouthpiece out. And so now the uh, ref has to call time. Uh -huh. And he has to pick up the mouthpiece and have to walk him over the corner. And his, his uh, trainer, uh, Goosen, Joe Goosen is like playing stupid. Like, I, what do you want me to do with the uh -huh. man? He's like talking and wasting time and get the thing back into the guy's mouth. Well, now he's had 20, 30 seconds wow. to refresh himself because he would have been mm -hmm. dead. Otherwise, the guy would have ran across the ring at him. He would have been looking at three guys yeah. coming at him and just gone down. Gets refreshed just for 20 seconds, comes out, starts beating the crap out of the other guy, and they stop the fight. Beautiful fight. Oh, amazing fight. But here's my thing. 
Uh, you're getting the uh, the uh, S beat out of you for 10 rounds, and your mouthpiece falls on the canvas. You, you don't need to wash it off. Just go and toss it back in. You're drinking your own blood. This guy blew a snot rocket on you in the fifth round. He's leaking out of all of his parts or hanging on you. You have his blood spread all over your the thing. You've been eating leather for 10 rounds and just, just Vaseline blood and leather for 10 rounds. But the thing lands on the Cuervo sign on oh. the canvas. Oh, get the Purell. We got to wash this down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. For true. whoever didn't see that fight, they got to see it. Oh. Uh, what really sucks about that is what depreciated the greatness of that fight, that freaking horse, 50 to 1, ended up winning that same day. And then the that's next day, the that's Derby? All, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then the next day, the front page is a, a horse instead of these two warriors. It, it, it's really weird with boxing. I mean, boxing was huge in the 50s, and, and you know, and it oh, had yeah. its stuff with yeah. Ali and everything. But in general... You know, uh, Tyson fights. It's in. It's on the seventh page of. The, it's it's back of the sports page. It's, yeah. it's crazy and it's weird because it, these guys are the amongst the highest paid, best known names and athletes in the world. Why? Why is the you know the Dodgers uh, lose to the Padres four to three in Game thirty eight of the uh, one hundred and sixty yeah. game season, and that's on the front page. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then and then there's a Trout report. And then there's a bunch of uh, yeah, collegiate golf, and then we get to the Warriors. I think. How I, dare they? I think we have. I'm outraged. We have very ambivalent feelings about enjoying boxing. Well, then let's. If if it's going to go away, it should go away. But no, if I it's think if not, going to bring it back. Put it put it on the front page. What do you think? think Contender going to help bring it back. Yeah. 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 I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I think I think I think uh, Tyson kind of helped disgrace it a little bit. I, I, I'm telling you, uh, this this Chico Corrales fight. You you never first off you never just saw a better sporting. You never saw a better 45 minutes of sport. Number one, you never saw two more courageous guys. You've never been more impressed with two guys. You've never been more excited. It, it's incredible. And then when the fight ended. Like how they handled themselves, both of them. They're yeah, total right. gentlemen. I mean, yeah, oh, I would have been whining like a stuck <laughs> pig. <laughs> it's yeah. his mouthpiece! Yeah. He's got Compl it no off. complaining, no complaining. Uh, I'd be crying. I'd just be crying and screaming. And I'd be, you know, I'd be yelling, Chip! I'd be yelling, Chip. <laughs> you know, it's funny, too. We always make fun of the guys, too, Cheater. when they get those, those, those after fight uh, interviews because the guy just. He, He's basically, it's like he ran a marathon while someone beat him in the head <laughs> right. for 26 miles. Right. And it's like, what did you think of the fight? And the guy's like, uh, well, uh, uh, Jim, I, I got in, hit my uh, equilibrium. I was like, ah, you ain't in, you can't even talk. <laughs> it's like, he should be vom. Anyone else would just be vomiting and oh. be, and it just, it just head spinning yeah, around, not even d disoriented, yeah. calling for their mom, yeah. not, not knowing who, where they were. You know what I mean? Especially when Larry Merchant does it, because he's so slow and pedantic. And when he tells you what you did wrong, he's like, I know what I did wrong. I just finished getting knocked out. Thanks for telling me again. Yeah, no, guy, and I then mean, look at it in the monitor. Yeah, it, imagine <laughs> interviewing most folks that just got knocked out. Yeah. I mean, whether it's on, uh, just on the workplace. Right. They'd just be crying and disoriented, not know where they were, right? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, come on, he mispronounced that word. <laughs> All right, you ready? There we go. Here we go. Step, oh, uh, yeah, Brittany. Hi. What's up? Okay, so I've been seeing a psychiatrist, and he told me that I am bipolar. All right. And yeah. I was kind of, the reason I'm confused about it is because I never thought of myself as bipolar before. And the only reason I'm really going to psychiatry is because um, my stepdad kind of sort of sexually abused me. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Um, well, he would, like, drill holes through the walls and peep on me and, like, expose himself to me. And hey, 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 you're weird. Yeah. It's not through the same hole, though, right? <laughs> no. Different hole? Okay. Yeah. All right. He drill holes in the wall? Yeah. How'd you find him? Oh, that's a bad sign. I mean, you guys living in a trailer or something? No, we have a huge house. I mean, there's, huge? we had 20 acres and horses. Really? Yeah. So a wall's like five inches thick. It's drilling the hole through it. I know. Okay. Would you right. see him looking at you? Yeah, we could see him sometimes. It, he mostly did it to me. It wasn't really my sister's as much, but... Jesus. And how old were you? Um, this went on since I was in sixth grade until yes. I was 17. Did you tell your mom? Yeah, my mom knew about it the whole time. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. Yeah, mm. it's weird. All right, so what's your question? Are you better well, looking than your sisters? I know it sounds like a horrible thing. It is a horrible question, but it's a stepdad. It's horrible, but stepdad. <laughs> stepdad, yeah. Are you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. They were Well, and they were a lot younger, too, so. Mm hmm. Hey. 
All right. I've turned the corner on this guy. So what is your question? No, but, uh, okay. but uh, 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 I'm just saying, if your guy's like 40, 45, and you move in a house, there's a sporty 16-year-old, like, uh, she's getting out of the shower. Like, uh, uh, you had a couple beers. Uh, Stepdad. A little look. Stepdad. A little look-see. Yeah. So, Brittany, what's and, the question? <laughs> all right. I was wondering if um, bipolar has ever, like, developed um, because of, I mean, I have issues with my mom's tooth and, like, relationship issues and stuff. Yes, bipolar can... Uh, trauma, post-traumatic stress disorder, borderline, and uh, bipolar probably sit, are probably related to one another. Mm -hmm. So having been abused and traumatized, all stuff can be associated with bipolarity, yes. And would medicine still help me? Yes, it will help you. How weird is, is like Thanksgiving and stuff? Do you go back home? Are you still living at home? I'm living with my mom right now. She divorced my stepdad. Uh -huh. because Because of this? No. Um, because I told on him, and the only way she could have me and my sisters back was if she divorced them. Oof. Well, wow. Went to, went to court? Um, he's actually was supposed to go to court on, um, last Monday. Oh, but, my God, this just happened? Um, yeah, it, about a year ago is when it all came out. But, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Yep. Your mom and you are doing okay? Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, you, you sound know, okay. You, yeah. you sound all right. Going to school? College? I, I um, dropped out of high school, actually. Well, let's let's well, finish that up. Finish that up, Brittany. No. Come on, come on. Yeah. All right, we'll she get to work. Yeah, just get to work. Uh, she look, sounds smart. I mean, all these people are trying to get through high school, and it's not happening, well, and she's get not back getting, in. Just derailed, get a job. She's derailed by all the crazy stuff at home, though. Yeah? Yeah. Jonathan, you finished high school? I did. Oh, you did? Sergio? Yes, sir. High school? Everyone's yeah. got a diploma? Mm-hmm. Me, too? No, wait. Well, not technically, <laughs> because I owe the book room. 1995 for We the People. So, so I couldn't physically pick up my diploma, but you know, on you know, in my mind, in the eyes of God, you know, I think I, I, want, I want to go on a campaign to get at the graduation, perhaps this year at North Hollywood High, to get you your diploma. I I think that that would, that be, would be, nice, be good. That'd be a nice thing. Twenty years later, I'm walking you got, down. You, got, the you thing. got a comedy show coming up in the fall. It could be the opening. <laughs> Hmm. Sort of, sort of uh, Adam goes little, back and gets his diploma. It's the opening series. He's I little, think, you know, the reality is, is I think I could go get my diploma. I don't, I don't even I think, think they'd they want need, the money. They need to give you one. They I owe you. One. They kicked they you out for all those years. Yeah. They've traumatized you. Oh. Uh, Wait, warehouse me. That's right. I didn't even know. I, I didn't even know the difference between a, a state and a country when I left that dump. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. All I did was clean I carpets. I think you ought to take one of us boxes over there with you. That's right. We're, we're, we're strong on either, yeah. yeah. either, either side. Either side of him. Yeah, that's right. There. I want you guys dressed the same with yeah. sunglasses and yeah. cross your arms and look at everybody. Yeah, and that's my right. That's my right and my left. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Get them, boys. We'll be something like the diploma security. <laughs> yeah. Set it out. Yeah. And I, I might I mean, might need a couple diplomas. Like, I might yeah. need, like, two well, and I a think, doctorate, no, too. Right. They ought to give you an honorary degree yeah. and your actual degree. Oh, and I want a letter. Oh, yeah, a letter. I want a letter football for, like, letter. Uh, varsity. Football. Yeah, I want football, varsity. <laughs> varsity football. That's what we need. Yeah. Sarah? Yeah? You're 15? Uh-huh. Uh, what's up, baby doll? Um, yeah, okay. Um, like, I have kind of, like, big boobs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, like, I have always had, like, boyfriends that are, like, jerky and stuff. And, like, they're always, like, feeling on me and, like, begging me to have sex and stuff. Jerky? Oh, they're jerks. They're yeah, jerks. Jerk. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh -huh. um... Yeah, horrible. Mm-hmm. And, like, I've always, like, hated it and stuff, but I always got those kind of guys. Yeah. Like... Yeah, but um, uh, hang on, though. That's probably yeah. the only kind of guy you're ever gonna meet, though. It's like saying, "Oh man, every time I get these uh, Cracker Jacks, they always have these uh, popcorn cover covered with caramel, caramel with a little prize in there and some peanuts." I got a new pack. I hate that. That's no that. good. Every single one, it's always the same. I gotta get another one. I got bad luck with Cracker Jacks. Uh, now I think yeah. that's all they are. Yeah, that's all guys are. She's got a They're all jerky. Sarah, come yeah. to terms with that. Sorry you have that, to just find a respectful jerk. Who is willing to play the game a little bit yeah, and not like, make you think he wants sex? <laughs> I have a new Great boyfriend advice. now, though. Yeah. And, like, he doesn't try anything with me, and he's, mm -hmm. like, really respectful. Good. And, Interesting. like, it kind of bothers me, and I don't know why. Like, it's so weird. You want this like, you I want him to paw you. But now it makes me all He's weird. gay. You want him to paw you. Huh? You wish he were more aggressive. Yeah, and I don't know why. Hmm. 
Well, I, don't women just want whatever it is they don't have all well, the time, constantly? I'm, I'm, it's, I'm, that, that way they can walk around in a constant state of never being pleased. Unless she needs chaos and drama, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Sarah? She's sabotaging that. Yeah. Chaos in the, in the family? Um, yeah. What, yeah. what happened? Well, my mom, she's, like, really mean and stuff. And, like, my dad, he used to be a coke addict. And uh -oh. he went to prison. And uh -oh. Mm -hmm. He just got back from prison, and now he's all in my life and stuff again. All right. Well, that that can work you up pretty good. Yeah. It can make it difficult to have stable relationships. So, so what you may do is get very, very attracted to guys that are not available, mm -hmm. sort of jerk guys, and then find a nice guy and then find a reason to sabotage that. Mm -hmm. So we, we recommend you kind of hang in with the nice guy and, you know, uh, find a way to make that relationship work. You, you, yeah, you, don't sabotage that. If don't you can get tolerate breaking. it. Yeah, if you can tolerate it, it will be a good thing. Are you a virgin? Yeah. All right. All right, good. But, good. like, my question or whatever is because, like, I wanted to know because, like, a few years ago I got molested by my stepdad, uh, and no. I want to know if, like, that has something to do with it. Yes, yes, that definitely does. Oh, like, you know, I'll tell you, from doing this show, I'd like to just put a bounty on stepdads. Yeah. I really would. Probably start with mine. Yeah. He didn't molest me, but that sort of made me angry. Like, what, not good enough? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was a perfectly attractive young lad. You're so busy watching TV, you don't have time to molest. So I start with him, and then we just keep going. Just take all the stepdads out. Well, there's a couple of good ones that would go down. I'm not going to be honest with well, you, but yeah. that's that's the way it works. It's the risk. We got we got to throw that net out there. You know, it's like when you got a man eating shark out there. Get you got to go out and get it. Get a couple. Dolphins. Once in a while, a couple of dolphins get caught up in the net, and even a couple other sharks that didn't even do anything get it. Shame. But what are you going to do? You got a man eater out there. Am I right, gentlemen? All right, let's move out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was delivering a speech on a dock. You need to run your fingers down a chalkboard. Yeah. Uh, the contender, everybody. I'll tell you the con You know, <clears throat> I watched the uh, I watched the uh, Oscar De La Hoya contender like show, which was uh, exactly the same, except for it wasn't any good. <laughs> uh, now, for me, it was good because I love boxing so much. I would just gladly watch anyone box at any time. But I realized for the general public, it didn't capture their imagination. And, uh, you know, it didn't have uh, Stallone and it didn't have Sugar Ray. But it didn't have Mark Burnett. It didn't have that big score, that powerful score. And the, the fights, mm. the fights are more exciting the way they're shot. The, the, the effects that he uses are more exciting than watching just in real time. And the, oh, showing the kids and the and the and the crowd and the daddy's getting beat on and they're crying. It's 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 incredible. I tell you, it's a it's a uh, it's a powerful, powerful journey. Sergio, yes. Is there odds going around with these? There's got to be Vegas odds. Oh, well, there has to be. I just don't know about them. You don't. Mm -mm. You don't. Mm -mm. You don't. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I, I think Sergio may be the favorite. Yeah. I think he might be. I think he's uh, considered. Uh, I think he's considered the most skilled. Mm. All the guys got Is a good right? chin. Adam, I listen. I I've I've seen millions and millions of uh, fights in my day, and uh, there's a lot of a lot of good fighters out there. And I think you showed the most skill. Thank I you. think I think with your defense. I think also see when a guy's longer and he has the longer body parts. Guys that are longer body look door, 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 not all of them. That's right, baby. Yeah, I got the longer body <laughs> parts. No, but guys that are sort of long and lean look dorky riding a bike. Mm -hmm. They look dorky trying to do gymnastics. They look dorky running. Dancing. You, the dancing, they always just look, you always, you always look better if you're shorter and yeah. have those smaller yeah. parts. Never uh, is that more true than in boxing. That's the lighter weight guys look just crisp and mm -hmm. sharp, and some of the heavyweights look kind of lumbering and sloppy. So the fact that Sergio's got real long parts and still look sharp, that's uh, that's that's uh, pretty good. You know good you're compliment. boxing, Adam. You know yeah. you're boxing. Yeah. I'll tell you. For a tall guy, for a tall guy like myself, I'm over six. Well, I'm six foot. To me to crouch down and then uncoil with punches the way I do, it's kind of unorthodox, and that's kind of a style that yeah. attributes to. There, there was another guy who was long who looked good, too. It was called the uh, Motor City Cobra. Oof. Maybe you know him as the hitman, Tommy Hearns. That's yes, the man right there. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the man. When you got a name like the Motor City Cobra, do you got to change it? Or was there other guys named the Motor City Cobra? I mean, is that not intimidating no, enough? He, he was a snake, too. Motor yeah, City so. Cobra, the land snake. Oh, yeah. There's something but, going here. I'm just saying, if I go with Motor City Cobra... You're going with it. Yeah, like, like you know, they gave me Brillo Head when I was in the 8th grade, yeah. and I stuck with it. Then you it's moved on to Ace, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair. I did modify to Ace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, we will uh, take ourselves a little break. Uh, got the contenders in here tonight, and we'll be right back after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Talking to the contenders tonight. Sergio Mora is here tonight. Jonathan Reed Hello. is here tonight. Jonathan was uh, unfortunately eliminated by uh, the uh, heavy-handed Jesse Brinkley, who just won uh, last week. It's good to see at least the guy who beat you is uh, made it to the uh, final four. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that, that makes me, you know, look kind of good. But, you know, I, I still wish that I, I was in the position that he's in right now. But, yeah. you know. And he's the only guy who knocked, I mean, really cleanly knocked another guy out. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty pretty much. Just yeah, you know, that says out. a lot about my chin, man, because he, he cracked me <laughs> with some good shots and, and, and the kingpin and didn't go down. No. But, you know, the, the, the fans got to gotta love a brother. This Mama Demo was doing it, baby. They yeah. got to vote me back on so I can get on there and do something. Well, here, here's the thing, too. It says, says here you have five kids. That's right. Wow. You All know, right. That, that lets them know that I don't shoot no blanks, man. No. And that's a, uh, speaking of nut, that's a big monthly nut. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's five I nuts. I know that's feet. right. I got to, man, I got, I got to put some money in the kids' college fund and all that good stuff. So here's, you know, here's what I'm talking about with Jonathan. I got I got some thoughts about Jonathan. <laughs> uh, here's the deal. You got to vote to see the undercard fights are. It's a chance for these guys to get some uh, more camera time to get uh, on television. And another thing too for boxers, uh, when you get some when you get some exposure, when your name gets up there, you could go from you know uh, twenty five hundred bucks uh, to fifty grand to hundred grand or whatever a fight. So many of these guys, it's, it's just it, about the one in the coming up is a million dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's part of the show, but then whoever wins that fight obviously is going to have a name or even loses that fight is going to at least have a name. For boxing, there's so many guys out there whose names the public aren't familiar with, even guys that are ranked in the top five, top ten guys, even champions, a lot of people don't know sometimes. So it's important to get your name out there. All these guys are good. I mean, they're all qualified. They're all, they all deserve to be there. But uh, Jonathan over here, he's got a couple of kids. He's, uh, I don't want to call him long in the tooth, but, you know, he ain't 21. You know what I mean? He's not going to be going for another 10 years. He's got to uh, make hay while the sun shines. You know what I'm saying? I got to do my thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 32 years old, but I'm a young 32. You understand what I'm talking about? Right. I'm 32, and I feel like I'm 21. Really? So that's why they got to watch out for the kingpin, because I'm ready. So you need to go to the website, <laughs> contender.yahoo.com, <laughs> and click on fan favorites, and hit the dot next to J. Reed, and vote for me. You understand what I'm saying? I am. I do. And, you know, I do, I do think that a lot of guys are going to vote vote for the people that got off most recently, like uh, Anthony, number yeah. one dad, and that kind of stuff. But uh, I said, I'd, I'd go for the guy I like the most, the guy who has the most kids, and the guy who needs the most money. There you go. That, I'm talking about. That's, that's the way it should that, be. be. That's awesome. Jonathan. All right, let's see. Uh, let's talk to Nate, who's 20. Nate? Yeah, how's it going? What's happening? Well, I, I live with my boss on his property here in Hills, Oregon. Mm -hmm. his, whole, his whole family lives here. Uh, what, what, uh, kind of bo what are you, a boss? You live with a boss. What kind of work do you do? Logging. You're logging? Yeah. All right. I, live on a, I live on a trailer on this property of five acres. <clears throat> does, yeah. does that mean you just cut down trees for you like a gardener for him? <laughs> well, a log, he, has a, he has a logging well, company, a the boss, right? Well, there's a big deal. He's the owner of the company, but there's a big deal between logging and cutting. I'm actually a timber faller and an arborist is what I, uh, what I am. Mm -hmm. right. Cool. Right, right now we're timber. Hey, let me tell you this, uh, too. Uh, it's bad to live on families' properties in, in the, like, the guest house because it, it's not for you, for the family. Because that part where uh, the family gets uh, massacred right. goes up, like, uh, tenfold. Because then they blame, first they blame sure. the guy who was living on, on the guest house and the property and then realize, they realize it was the Mansons or something like yeah. that. But it's always, always he's, you're the guy, you're going to discover the bodies, Nate. That's how well, it works. Yeah. Well, you know you're what the Kato Kalen. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's weird. The other day, uh, the boss's uh, wife has uh, ducks. Mm -hmm. a, couple the, a couple of the ducks turned up missing. You know, I bird hunt. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You see? Uh -huh. See, that's how it starts. I didn't kill the ducks. But, you know. Yeah, but tell that to the cops. This, well, they well, blame you. Hang on. Now, what are you calling about? What are you calling well, about? Anyways, Hold on. Uh, I, I, that Hold phrase, on. Uh, turned up missing, always bothered me. Yeah. Turned up means you, you got showed back up. from... You showed up. Yeah. You can't be missing and turned up. I don't like turned up missing. I'm with you. Turned out missing. Turned, turned off. out to be missing. 
Yeah, it turned up missing. I, ended I, up missing. I, I never, uh, it's right up there with uh, can't win for losing. I think it started with never yeah, ended up. It was Fat chance, up. slim chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it turned up missing. Never did like that. All right, today, so what's the question? Well, anyways, um, I have a porn collection. I had a porn collection, I should say. And uh, the boss's mom, sometimes she'd come out and open up my trailer and stuff on the property, air it out for me while I'm out working. The and boss's stuff. mom? Yeah. Does she right. hunt porn? No. <laughs> she well, comes out, airs out your trailer. I think it out. Porn. <clears throat> yeah. So what? And I want to want to approach the boss about it or whatnot. What do you know think she did. stole the porn? Well, I don't think she stole the porn per se. I found it and maybe gave it to the boss. And why is this on the property type of situation? Because the boss. All right. That, that, that porn. That porn. Let me tell you. That porn is gone. That's, yeah. Start over. No, it's like it's it's like when a drug deal goes bad and you steal a kilo of coke from some drug dealer. He doesn't go to the cops. <laughs> He either goes after you or, or, or you, you don't get it so back. The bottom line is what you, he has to hope for is that the boss does not approach him about that kilo. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. porn's gone. Yeah. And uh, would you go to air out some logger's trailer? What does that mean? I don't, I, that mean? I don't know what air. Because I don't know. They the go can home. opener again? You dare the roof, take the roof off? Or? Hey, here's how you air out a trailer. You get a BB gun and you just go on your porch and put a few holes in it. You open the door. You open the door. <laughs> Why do you have to air out his what trailer? Does mean? What does I don't mean know. I don't. I don't trust Nate. I don't believe so him. So this calls about lost porn. I think. I think yeah. it is. And logging. Oh God. Yeah, Nate. Mm. We don't. Yeah. We don't believe you. What do you mean oh, aired out? What does that mean? She's opened the trailer doors, let fresh air into the day. It was eighty degrees today. Nate, do you stink or something? I mean, what's the what's the air out there, buddy? I'm going with well, the I air. Work in the woods, you know. I work in the woods. I live yeah, yeah. Loggers, loggers smell. Ooh. Well, if, yeah. if if you're the one living in the trailer, then why does the boss's mom have to air out the trailer that you're living in all by yourself, buddy? Yeah, I I agree. What and, else is going on in this? And trailer? don't you just lock it? It's like, ironic, ironic that uh, lumberjacks are amongst the smelliest people around. But that Christmas tree, that air freshener tree yeah. that you hang up in your car, yeah. delightful. Yeah, you know what I mean. You ever think about that? Irony. That's pretty heavy. Turned up missing. That's heavy. Wow. <laughs> Turned up missing. <laughs> Yeah, Emily? Yeah. You're 20? 21. You're 21. Been on hold for a while. What's, What's up? up? Yeah. Um, basically, um, every now and then, very rarely, maybe like once in a couple months or once in a month, um, me and my boyfriend, during foreplay, there are erection problems. It's like it starts out okay, and then all of a sudden mm. it's just gone and okay. it can't come back mm -hmm. and yeah it, it is that because it goes out. on to go on too long um no no it's not because it goes on too long it's just you know it starts out um, with kissing or whatever just it starts and then when we get you know it just in, in the middle of foreplay it'll just stop and then there's no way for it to come back and it, it's is there really, something come out of him during the foreplay you see what i'm asking no no it's hmm. it's almost like it's almost like it switches gears like we start doing something else and then when when i go back like when i put my hand down there or when I go and I notice it's just gone and it just doesn't come back and we blame it on other things like oh maybe we're maybe he's just really tired like maybe he's not taking care of himself like but the one, the one well, that you check off on. your lift with a twenty year old just, just this business about twenty year olds being too tired just check that one off yeah. the list and, that, that and is not he's a not taking care oh he drank too much caffeine last week are you kidding <laughs> twenty year old. 20-year-old has a boner all the time. Doesn't no matter, matter what. what he's doing. Yes. You know, I, I think he's, he's just got a short attention span. <laughs> Is he on medication? He, no, well, he's 25. And I'm oh, well, that 25. makes all the difference. Yeah, Is he on medication? Old man. Yeah. He's decrepit. Emily. I'm surprised well, he... Um, you know, it's, we have really crazy schedules sometimes, and this last week was like finals week, and, you know, we don't, we sometimes go through nights where we just don't sleep and we're studying or whatever, and then, you know, it... The night before last was actually like a really tough night, and then it happened this morning that. Is he know, on any medication, didn't... Emily? What the hell is she talking? No, 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 I don't no know. Medication. What, what she... are you majoring in? Uh, jabbering? <laughs> Nonstop? No, no, no. no, no. That, with an emphasis on rambling? <laughs> What are you talking about? And now I know she's thinking, she was thinking like yeah. a girl. It's like, well, yeah. I didn't have the right mood. I was. Are you talking busy and... in the bedroom? Because that'll do it. Yeah, listen, that'll do it. All right. Listen, guys do not yeah. have those issues. <laughs> they just don't. Okay. Okay. 
No, and, and being tired or being stressed or being that, that as you've been married for thirty years and you're in your fifties, that may maybe, be an excuse. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, I maybe. don't really think it's because of that either. That's All right, really so you guys true. have had you guys have had successful sex before though, right? Oh yeah, like it was fine like last night. And then this morning it was just like what's going uh, on? Well maybe he's, he's yeah, he's not he has to reload, has to re recharge the battery a little bit, Emily. You can't keep going. The guy has to build up the fluid again. Yeah, yeah. Give him a okay. break, Emily. Yeah. Well, it's it's my you know it's my first like sexual experience, so I don't really I know. I think about you, you got to just, just understand it operates differently than a female. It's just a different okay. system. Operates yeah. differently, thinks differently. Yeah. Different set of circumstances that make it run. Yeah. Emily, what's your boyfriend's name? Um, I don't know. Well, you know what? Just tell him to call uh, Jonathan Reed. Yeah, call me. That, you that's know, the problem. I, I, How do you I, log I'm on? I'm Dr. Love, doctor. <laughs> Vote from online. Yeah. Yeah, you got to vote for me online. He has five kids. Dot yahoo dot com. <laughs> <laughs> no, Emily, just, just realize, guys, guys, after they ejaculate, have a refractory period. They can't have an erection for a while after that. Mm -hmm. If you've been having sex regularly, sometimes guys will have difficulty getting an erection while they're sort of battery recharges. And that can take you know, up to a day or so, some guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, right baby doll. Okay. Thanks, all right, and listen, you you're you're you have a lot of angst, and you're freaking them out. Well, you also bit. you keep thinking it through what it'd be like as a woman. The guys don't function like women. You got okay. you got to ask him. It's frustrating because you start to think that it's you, or you start to think that you know something's wrong with their health. It's just you know. Well, I yeah, that, I think is wrong. Something wrong with his health is a good bet if he actually is having a problem. But I don't think he's having a problem. Yeah, he gave it to her the night yeah. before, probably yeah. three in the morning. Right. Then at uh, five forty-five a.m. Like, what's the matter? What's the matter? What's matter? Yeah. You're not into me anymore. Are you talking to me? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I thought. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I'm just. I just wonder why you got so let's, personal let's all of a sudden on the air. Let's go. Want to go to break? Yeah, let's go. All right, hold on. Uh, Britney I gotta, I gotta here. Talk, I got to talk to you. The virgin uh, guy friend keeps asking for sex. Yeah. We got Cole over here. Huh? Breastfeeding. All right. Contender, everybody. Best show on uh, TV, quite easily. And boy, if you were into it uh, six weeks ago, look out now. It's, it's heating up, and every fight has been good. And uh, it really, fights have gone, have ranged from good to great. Think how amazing that is. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, and not only that, but uh, the oftentimes, or most often, the underdog has come out on top. Now, I don't know if, they, if they're really the underdog or they're just spinning it that way. No, they're, the, they're the underdog. <laughs> but when you got one guy's 27-1 and one and the other guy who had a, who's 8-0, but that's all with his fraternity, <laughs> and, and that guy wins, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's an underdog winning no matter how you edit it. If he wins, he wins. All right. We'll uh, take a little break. Jonathan is here. Sergio is here from The Contender. We'll uh, be right back after this. Yeah. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Talking a little contender tonight. NBC, 8 o'clock, best show on uh, TV. Sergio Morris here tonight. Jonathan Reed here tonight. Sergio, known as the Latin Snake. Dr. Drew, known as the Polish Sausage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, Polish, any right? Russian. No Russian? Yeah. No Polak at all? No. Nothing? Mm. Hmm. Russian dressing? What do we call dressing. you? Russian sausage. Russian to the bathroom? <laughs> we got you something good, Drew. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see the, uh, uh, what rhymes with czar? With some Scottish. Bizarre. I mean, so we get, maybe get some haggis in there or something. Yeah, I think we'll stick. We'll stick. Uh, we'll stick with Russian, but uh, we'll right. try to. We'll try to. We'll try to figure out a good nickname for you. Right. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that was my first joke ever told on radio. I said. Uh, I said uh, I was training Jimmy Kimmel, and I was like, we're trying to come up with uh, nicknames for uh, for Jimmy. And uh, first, we thought maybe the Brooklyn Bomber, because he's from Brooklyn. And then maybe we thought the Italian Tornado. But a after seeing him move around in the ring, we just settled on Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're bad or really good. That's my thing. Like, uh, if, if, if your nickname was just Jim, that would mean you were a tough mf -er. You know what I mean? You'd be scared of a guy named how about, Jim. How about Jimmy? Oh, Jimmy, even worse. worse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they'd had a Jimmy in the competition. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, it's a cop-out. Every once in a while, there's a guy named Brad, and it's always bad. Bad Brad. Bad Brad hidden. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a cop-out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, buddy. You got to do better than that. Yeah. Brittany? Yeah? You're 14? Yes. 
I like to be like Adam the Dry Hump or Corolla or something, you know, something to freak you, you out a little be. bit. You like, could be, too. Forget about getting hit. You know you're going to get hit. You may get dry humped in that ring. I mean, really freak a guy out. You know what I mean? Give him something yeah. to think about in there. Brittany. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? He's already, he's already looking at your hands, but he should be looking. You know, you make a move, he freaks out, he pulls his leg back, and pow, big yeah. overhead and cross. Huh? Rear entry Corolla. Yeah. <laughs> Brittany. 14. Brittany. 14, guys. 14. 14. What's hap what's happening, Brittany? Um, I hang out with like a lot of guys. Like mm -hmm. all my friends are guys, except for like a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And recently, one of uh, my really close friends, he's been asking me to like have sex with him and everything. How old is this guy? He's fifteen. All right. Mm -hmm. So you tell them no. All, all guys are always going to be at you about that. I, I know. I know. Like I. I just keep, like, every time he asks me, I just change the subject or practice. No, don't, don't, no, 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 no. J close the door on him. Do not, do Actually not. Actually slam it on his penis. Slam the honest penis you have to his nuts, preferably. Wow. But don't don't get into deflecting or deferring <laughs> or demurring. Just close oh. it down. Shut it down. It'll stop. You know, it's, it's, what's great is you even feel like you have to dignify it with an answer. Right. Like, yeah. back in the day, you can ask someone for sex, you get hit with a purse. Right. Fresh, <laughs> pow, with a purse. I mean, now it's like or shoe. You can yeah, you can have a shoe. Now you can just or a rolling pin. Yeah. That's when I asked my mom for sex. Yeah, yeah, pow, yeah. with the rolling pin. That's your mom, yeah. uh, but the the thing is, is the thing is now it's like eh, just go ahead and ask. No, no, beg. They start begging beg. and, and yeah, join right Yeah, you break them down. Yeah, yeah it's like uh, asking your dad to take you to Chuck E. Cheese or, or something. Disneyland. Eventually, yeah. it's like, ah, get in the car, let's go. Yeah, times have changed. I never yeah. asked for sex. No, no, man. No, no, no Brittany, just close them down, shut it down. Stay away, Brittany. Get good at that too. Get good at never very, asked for. Very gracious and very firm, swift and sure. Okay. All right. There, he's well, asking like, for. They're asking for that. Like what? Like how would they'll, I just tell him? They'll, no, they'll like you even more. Hey, cut it out. I, I, I said I, no. <laughs> watch. Watch. We'll try this. Okay. Hey, hey, listen, listen, watch. Brittany. Brittany. Ask, gonna me, do this. ask me for do sex. This. Ask me for sex. You're going to be Brittany, okay? Oh, yeah, That's I know. This. Okay. Oh Brittany, Brittany. Huh. We always what? hang out all the time. We have yeah. a great time. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have sex? That'd be great. Let's have sex. Come on, Brittany. Let's have sex. What do you think, Brittany? Let's have sex. Brittany, sex. Come on, Brittany. What do you think? I'm going to give you oral and think about it. <laughs> where's, I mean, the, where's the David Dollar no, girl vomit? No, Brittany, come on. No, Brittany, serious. It's we're friends. It's a big deal. What part Brittany, of no don't Brittany, you understand, Brittany, son? Brittany, 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 come on. How Brittany, about relax. I take my steel toe boot and drive it up your ass? <laughs> All right? Huh? Are you talking? <laughs> How about some sex, Brittany? No, <laughs> Brittany. You just say no. That's all. Yeah, just clear, just clear and clean and swift. It's, it's fine. A, they'll be it's fine. They'll like you more that way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. well, <laughs> he's not gonna like you more, but that was a friend. That was a friend. Yeah, he'll respect you. He'll, he'll stay a friend and not be somebody who just has sex and moves on. Well, let's let's address this for, for a second because I think people think that when they tell people answers they don't want to hear. Uh, such well, as women especially think if they don't make a guy happy all the time, he's gonna somehow think ill of her and just just. Abandon her. But even, not even in male-female relationships, just in all relationships, whether it's co-workers, whether it's sparring partners. See the way I weave that yeah, in tonight? Yeah, well done. What, what, whatever it is, in a way, you think people aren't going to like you when you tell them no or you can't do this or I'm not going to do that. But in a way, they end up respecting you more. And it's just the opposite. When you keep saying yes, they just steamroll over you and they lose their respect it, for you. It lets you have an adult relationship. Right. Especially when you're around a bunch of guys. Uh, you're probably the prize, and this guy's the one that's trying to, you know, lure you in and claim you. So yeah. be careful and by, with and, and by the way, any even a guy you want to have sex with, if he just comes up and asks you want to have sex, you should just say no that's out of principle. Nice. Yeah. All right. Oh, true. Remember, you used to have to have a rap. You used to have to play like an instrument. You really have to have something going on. You have to dance. <laughs> guy's a great dancer. He gets all the ladies. Now you just got to just go at, you know, just go tell him. And then it's like, all right, all right, I'll just take oral. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Half the women we talked to is like, I didn't want to have sex with the guy, so I gave him a BJ. I felt uh -huh. bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Consolation prize. Absurd. Oh, I got to build a time machine, Drew. And go. Just and learn how to dance? <clears throat> no, it needs to be a, a young man now. No, no. Actually, I want to go build a time machine and get, oh. get into my 80s. And oh, just, okay. Because I want, want, to wear, want to wear one of those jumpsuits with my initials in yeah, it and just nice. relax. Okay. <laughs> and I'm tired of working. Yeah, you won't A lot care. of people want to build a time machine go back. I want to go forward and be like 80. Just relax. Good times. Jet, 
and yell at yes. kids to get off the lawn. Get off that lawn. That's what I want no, to do. No, I like it out here. Yeah. Jet, is that your real name? Yes. Well, I drink alcohol. All right. Is uh, your parents uh, Paul McCartney fans? No, I drink alcohol. Uh -huh. No. No, uh -huh. not at all. Um, I was named after a French actress. All right. Are you, okay. Are you drunk? No, not at all. Should I be? No, no. no just your voice quality reminds us of something. Uh -oh, all right. This? I have no idea. Jet. Oh, this is Jet the Band. Yes. I was thinking of the Paul McCartney show. I know. All right. Go ahead, Jet. That's well, pretty sad, Adam. I heard you guys talking about, uh, you know, I'll just take a blowjob and everything else. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, I don't understand the concept of why women won't swallow. Mm. Well, but how about women that really are aversive to this act? Why? And why is, they? Is that, is that more difficult for you to understand? And they, well, they like the taste of themselves, but they won't swallow a man. Or why a man I, likes. Who? Well, what? slow down. Well, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, Jet. Jet, 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 Jet. Slow down. Let's take a break. We got to talk to Jet some more. <laughs> I like the taste of. Yeah, that's like, huh? <laughs> how do they even what? get the? I do. Uh, uh, they must use. Uh, 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 the the only way you could taste yourself as a woman is if you used a baguette, and then you. Crackers. <laughs> you taste yourself, you know. Oh, that's the creepiest thing, though. Uh, I want to okay. taste you. We, we got to talk to Jed some more. We, we need a little conversation. Let's just start calling women Let's hypocrites. Let's take a break. Take All a break. right. Yeah. All right. Sergio's here. Jonathan is here. Both from The Contender. NBC, uh, 8 o'clock Sunday night. Best show on TV. Hate to say it, but it just is. Love that show. We'll take a quick break. Be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. We lost our caller we were talking to. She was interesting. Mm. She welcome to call back. Yeah, she certainly is. Even on my cell phone. Send it high. Yeah. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Sergio and Jonathan both here tonight from The Contender. Best show on TV. Sergio has uh, made the cut to the final four. Got, yes, uh, sir. Peter Manfredo, who's uh, looking good, who... Uh, Missed, uh, lost his first fight. They voted him back in. He came back in, and so far he's uh, been on a roll. Jesse Brinkley, who uh, won last week in uh, dramatic fashion, down, down. Uh, probably couldn't have won the fight without a knockout. And then pow, big uppercut. Actually, two big uppercuts. Got uh, number one dad out of there. And then uh, Alfonso <laughs> Gomez, who uh, Michelle has a, a huge crush on. He's a likable guy. Very likable. He's a very sweet guy. And uh, another guy's uh, good, good, good in the skills department, but uh, probably not as crafty as the uh, Latin snake, Sergio. Oh, thank you. Not as crafty, but uh, moves forward and sort of nice, nice, nice uh, combination between being sort of just aggressive and uh, and and having some good, good movement. So uh, I I don't know. Who the uh, who the favorites would be? I I would it'd be real hard to bet against any of them. And since they're all you know 160 pounds, and they're all evenly matched, I would say I'd say any one of them could beat any one of them on any given night. I gotta say Alfonso and Sergio though would probably have the edge on uh, on the rest of the uh, c contenders at this stage of the game. Also, uh, if you want to get back and see uh, Jonathan Reed, five kids. That's, uh, that's a big nut. Lots so of mouths to feed. Bring him back. <laughs> bring him back. Get a little cash in his pocket. What do you do, Jonathan? Contender.yahoo.com. Go to Reed. That's yeah. right. Contender.yahoo.com. And mm -hmm. hit on Cotton Pick and Dad Gum. Vote for fan favorites. And then hit the button mm -hmm. next to my sexy face. Mm-hmm. And then hit the vote button. You understand what I'm talking about, oh ladies? It's, it's all... going to be some changes around here. So... If you want to see the kingpin do his thing, you got to get on that internet and all, do it. All going down on uh, May 24th in uh, Vegas, Caesars Palace. Mm. Wow. Huge. Oh, my God. Listen, I would be hoping I would lose It's you know sooner than later just so I wouldn't have to make that walk to the ring in Caesars Palace and national TV Why? and a huge crowd. It's just I would be freaked out. Oh. <laughs> I, I have the heart of a loser. That's what we dream of. You have the heart of a lion, and I have the heart of a loser. <laughs> And then they never, they never talk about, what about that lion? Does he have a human heart now? What's he doing for a heart? You know what I mean? Maybe he's, like, speaking. Like he's saying to the other lions, like, man, I'd like to read a book and then uh, eat myself a uh, Salisbury steak. And the other lions are like, Adam, what, you what follow happened? your call. 
You find it. You, this is where your heart is. I know, but I, I'll tell. I'll tell. You, I would be. I, I would be thrilled and just just scared to death to uh, to go out there. I wish would. All, only thing I do know is uh, all the guys that have uh, done too much praying have been knocked out so far. So I would take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I would take it easy with God. I don't. Oh, I, man. I, I, I think God is like, come on, buddy. You can't ask me to help you beat another guy up. Now I'm going to send you down. See what I mean? There you go. Yeah. I'd like to see a boxer who was into Wicca. Oh. Yeah, like a, a, a uh, who was uh, into like witchcraft. Nice. And he actually was like putting spells on uh, on his opponents. Perfect. Yeah, be smart. Throwing things into the volcano. Alive, right. Newt. Yeah. Sure. Cole? Yeah. Hey, uh, Sergio and Jonathan, and I'd like the Moscow medic, Dr. Drew, to weigh in on this. Ooh, well. that's, uh, uh, that's well good. Well done, Cole. Yeah. Well done. Russian name. I, I was thinking of the Soviet surgeon, but I wasn't too sure. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, I want, I'm a goaltender in ice hockey, and I wanted to ask the gentleman, is there any merit not having sex the night before a game or a fight? Great question. Uh, well, the doc could probably help you out here. I think it's more mental than anything, but uh, mm -hmm. the rule is that you lose testosterone. That's what the... the, there's, the sort, there's sort of a maximal zone where if you um, don't ejaculate for a long period of time, your testosterone will drop off. And if you do it too much, your testosterone will drop off. So you tell me I need to go jerk off? I'm just saying. The one, the one thing that it, it will give you by letting it build up a little bit is a sense of frustration. Mm. So that, that, you know, I bring that, that in the right. Take work. it out on yeah. a guy. Well, that's good on a boxer because, yeah, yeah we can take it out. That's good for a goalie, too, I'd imagine. I've, I'm not, not world class like these guys. Had a couple of amateur fights. And I can tell you that, you know, before a fight, to get the tape off the glove and actually beat off and then get the tape <laughs> back on, you know, with just moments going into the ring is not a great strategy. Oh, I mean, those things... So you got to do it with the glove on, what you're saying. I'm saying get your hands taped, but then before the glove goes on, then, that's then when you, you got to do it. I would always decide after the glove was on and the thing was taped you up. You find a way. Yeah, I'm just saying. Or, or maybe just do it the night before. Yeah. So now, now that I no. think about it. Here's what I understand about taping those uh, the boxing gloves. They, uh, they always put the uh, cloth tape, the medical white tape, around mm -hmm. the laces. Because you will get laced, you know, and they, you yeah. know, actually the laces will hurt you. Yeah. So they put the, uh, put the cloth tape around there. And then in every other fight, the cloth tape would start coming off. And there'd be like four inches of it dangling. And for some reason, just like the mouthpiece, it needed to be rinsed off as the guy was getting bloodied. Uh, somehow this little piece of tape was going to do world-class damage to a boxer, even though there was a fist inside the glove where the tape was loose that was beating the bejesus out of the guy. But it's right. like this little piece of tape could get in your eye. Right. So they always immediately stop it. They're like, oh, the tape's loose. we got to stop. Time out. Time out. And they pull them, and the guy tries to fix it. Well, at a certain point, they start going with duct tape because mm. duct tape ain't coming off. But they start with the duct tape. Duct I don't know duct. why they didn't start with the duct tape, whatever you call it, Drew. But it they went to duct cool. tape. Now they've gone back to the cloth tape. They're changing it. But why not just stick with the duct tape? It I works. Don't know. I it doesn't know. look it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I think so. But they make it in red. It looks pretty cool in red. All I'm saying is, is in this uh, this great Corrales fight we were talking about earlier in the show, they had to they had to fix the glove at a certain point, and they do it in great fights. They do it in world class belt fights. They, they do it all the time. They just red go tape. with the duct tape. There you go. Or just agree on it. Boxing is one of those sports where it's like they always complain that uh, they don't get any respect, and all, but then they do stupid things all the time too that they should fix. I would fix. I'd start. If I was the commissioner, duct tape. All the way around. Who are we talking to, Drew? Amanda. All right. So can you, uh, what's the deal with beating off? Enjoy. Oh, really? <laughs> Gets game on. No, really. Would you do it the no, night before? Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would like to know. I would Not say the no. night before. I'd say let Two it, nights. I'd say let it go a few nights, yeah. Well, you can't go more than three. I'd say I'm just, okay, yeah. I, well, Whatever you can tolerate. What would you go, whatever you can tolerate? I go two months. Two months. Two yeah. months. Get out. I, I didn't want to say it. See, I think that would drop your testosterone. Right. You don't go two yeah. months yeah. because you'll just you'll dry up. <laughs> right. Your nads will shut down. That's, like, <laughs> well, that's the fallacy in boxing that we all follow. And I go two months. Man. Two months. Wow. Well, I'll tell you the one good thing is if you got a you got a bunch of twenty two year old guys all living in the same house, uh, it's it's a beat fest. <laughs> now the fact <laughs> the fact that they're boxers dries that takes that's that nice. problem right out that's of you. Nice. That's a good thing. Yeah. All right. So where are we, Drew? Talking to Amanda. How long, though, do you wait? If you've got a fight. A week or two. There's a big difference between a week, <laughs> one week and two. That's 100% different. I, I, I think it's different. One I week. All right, Get one at week. At least a week. Okay. At least a week. Wow. All right. All right. That's good to know. I got a week. Easy to say. <laughs> Amanda? Yeah. You're 19? Yes, I am. What's happening? 
Okay. Anytime my boyfriend goes down on me, the sensation is just too much and I can't handle it. And I'll literally push him away. Do you have and orgasms with intercourse? Yes. That's you. See, that, that, mm -hmm. that some, the women that have multiple orgasms with intercourse do not like oral sex. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Wow. And that's you. Man, imagine, imagine that. A pa what a package. And vice versa, right? Like, if they don't um, have Inter orgasms. Right. Yeah. The oral sex seems to be the only way. Yeah. Mm. Those, are the, those are the ones I get stuck with. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. That's I'm, most of What them. a package. It's like, I, I can only have, you know, I have millions of orgasms through uh, intercourse, but I'm grossed out by you uh, going down it's on just, me. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah, well, done and done. <laughs> your wish is my command, unless your wish is for me to go down on you, <laughs> in which case I just want to have sex. All right, so, uh, Amanda, this is good. This is fine. This is you. But I don't have multiple orgasms. I don't even consider... You're, you're 19. Mm. It'll start. It'll start up. I bet you. It'll well, start. do you have do you have one orgasm? Um, on the rare occasion, yeah. Oh, I thought you said you did. No. You do have with intercourse. Yeah, I I do have orgasms, but not rarely. Not easily. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah. Most, lately, I've been playing with myself. Why we're having intercourse, and I will have an orgasm like that, and I can handle with me playing with myself. But when he does it, I can't stand it at all. Well, maybe it's just the way he's doing it. Yeah, okay. and by the way, it's unfair to ask a guy to do a good job At sort of bang, bending the elbow around and trying to prop yourself up against the backstop of the, the bed there. It's, <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, you good You good at that? Oh, Drew's good at that. What are you talking about? No, he's playing <laughs> with her. You, you know, you, you're saying he, you he, don't he like gets, him playing with you he, when he's having sex with you, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. But also, he, but he doesn't know what he's doing with oral sex. He's over, oh, over oh, doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. He's he's too he's too ambitious. Yeah. Are you a are she's, you a talker? She's nineteen. She's nineteen. She's young. He's yeah. young. So. Well, do you talk? Do you tell him what you want? I try, but it's sort of I don't know intimidating because he's my only partner that I've had, and so we're no. sort of learning together. All right, all right. So you're just uh, you're new. You got to direct him. You got he has he's got to learn what works for you. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta lead him down the right path, sweetheart. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's the way you talk to him yeah, when he, you talk to him. Yeah. So, you know, what he likes is not what you like, and the guys have trouble figuring that stuff. Well, out. let me do my cat uh, dog yeah, analogy yeah. again. Well done. Thank you. Here it goes. What it is is especially it takes a while as a, as a guy to learn that women don't like the same thing you like, mm -mm. and you would just assume it's like if you were. That's the way you think as a human being. Like I'm going to order a pizza. Oh, all right. I must love pizza. Oh, it's, I like the pineapple and the Canadian bacon. Let's get three of those. And then everyone shows up at your house. And they're like, are you an idiot? I don't like that. But you just think like, and then you start thinking, how could you not like what I like? Men and women, totally different. And women, so men, especially 19-year-old guys, they want to be treated, uh, they want their junk handled vigorously, f fast pace. With a kung fu grip, <laughs> you know what I mean. More uh, tons of lube, big kung fu grip. Let's go at it. You go to wim you go at women with that same speed and that same cadence. You freak them out, and they don't like it. They like it. They like it low and slow. And like here's the cat and the dog thing. Yeah. You're as a guy. You're like a dog. You want to chew. You want to play. You want to wrestle. You want to get rough. You want to. You want. You want to go at it. Women, they're like cats. And if you if you go at a dog, I mean, I go at my dog, I flip him over, I start working the belly, I start slapping him, and then grabbing, and start wrestling, ears. pulling the ears all out of the place. Cat, you can't do that. Cat, you got you can't can't even see you paying attention to it, or it gets upset. <laughs> right. Cat's like, what? What? He's getting up. He, uh, is he coming to pet me? Because I'm getting on top of the fridge. If he thinks he's coming over here, cat, you just have to sit there. Cat's got to come to you. Mm -hmm. Then you put your hand down, but you can't. You can't lunge at the cat, and you can't pick it up and start doing that. Ew, who's a good cat? Who's a good? You see, you don't talk to your cat. Flip it over. <laughs> Dog, you talk to. Look at him. He knows he's doing it. You know, you do that thing with cat. You never go. Who's a good? The cat will just freak out, jump on your head, claw your corneas out, and then just take off for the the uh, the solitude of the refrigerator top right. again. So you put your hand, and what's the cat do? Cat comes around, and a cat cat start pushing on you a little. It, it'll tell you where the pressure is, you know, and you just start pushing. And the cat, will, the, the cat will provide its own pressure. 
You know what I mean? The cat will sort of go up against you, then smooth, rhythmic. Not going against the grain, nothing herky-jerky, no quick movements. Nice, smooth, repetitive motions. That's what they want. Huh? You're turning me on. Uh, (laughs) He hasn't beat off in nine months. (laughs) He's going nuts. It's like a caged animal. I'd be out of control, too, except for, thank God, I only got seven hours (laughs) under my belt. So to speak. (laughs) Yeah, so nice slow, rhythmic, and not the way you want it. Now, you can't tell. 19-year-old kid doesn't know that. Yeah. He's just going to dive in and go at it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he doesn't know. He don't know. And the only thing he does know is watching porn. Which is worse. That's dog on dog. Yeah, yeah. Chicks ain't into that. Ain't the way chicks that like that's, it. Those aren't real chicks. That's the way guys like to think chicks like it. Wish, they make the movies wish, for dudes. Right. Wish the chicks would like it. Yeah. yeah. There should, you know, there should be disclaimer. Like, they, you know they do that disclaimer, like, all models over 18 years of age. They should yeah. do one. Dudes, this is not how your girlfriend wants it. <laughs> this is only for you to beat off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Andrew, write that down. Not to be misconstrued for the behavior of a normal female. That's human. right. That's right. Homo and sapiens. It be, it's a huge disappointment because first you go, you go at them, you go down them, you screw that up. Then... Uh, when you finally do bust a nut, they don't rub it into themselves, going, ooh, more, more. They're like, ow, oh, Christ, why don't you say something? This is a new blouse. Okay, there'll be no more of this. So you watch porn, you get ruined. You think, oh, look at her. Oh, she loves the taste of it. She can't get enough. She loves it. Then you get with your girlfriend, and it's like, what are you, high? Get out of here. Do it in the, do it in the cactus. Oh, no. It really is misleading. Now, think about this. Every 14-year-old kid's on the Internet. Every boy grows up. He's watched. Yeah, he's he's logged 7,000 hours of porn before he grabs his first boob. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now he's, now he's all off. Mm-hmm. He's, he's gone. At least we didn't see enough porn to be pushed the wrong direction that far. Yes? That caller from Oregon was he hating life. Yeah. Oh, the guy out in the uh, shed? There you go, the, yeah. the, the timber boy. He misses his porn. <laughs> his beloved Poor porn. Melissa? Yeah. You're 28? I am. What's up? My question is, is I had a baby back in December, and I'm breastfeeding. Um, in February, I found out that I have long QT syndrome. Uh-oh. So therefore, What's I that? can't. It's a rhythm. It's a it's an electrocardiographic change that puts her at risk for something called right. Tors- and I've been to an it's called e- something called Torsade de Point. Right. Mm. Torsade de Point. And uh, it's French. It, but it's. Do you have any kind of cardiomyopathy, uh-huh. any intrinsic muscle disease of the heart? No. So your heart mm. muscle is good. Yes. And you have no valvular heart disease. No. You just have the long QT syndrome. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. I uh, actually I found out because I was on the phone with my husband, and you know. Had a fainting spell, passed out mm-hmm. while I was on the phone with him, and so he called the fire department, and that's where they found me. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And so my EKG came back, you know. Um, it would be nice if your wife fainted once in a while during those marathon conversations she has when we're in a <laughs> limo driving from town to town, and you're on the cell, and you try to get off the phone with her. Third. Okay, sweetie. All right. Will do. <laughs> will do. Will no, no, I no. We'll do, we'll do. Okay, all right. Just fainted during one of those. Those are my patients, not my. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So my question is: is since um, one of the things that I can't do is exercise. Mm-hmm. And well, like, now wait a minute. Well, because you can't get your heart rate up. Right. Well, you can't. You're not supposed to valsalva. What's that mean? Would Just bear, really? bear down real hard. But, bear down. But like, what do you mean you can't? Are they really finish the workup, or what, what's the deal here? Well, my cardiologist, um, he put me on <clears throat> beta blocker. Yeah. And um, told me that no excessive exercising. Before I had, before I found out I had this, I have congenital long QT. And um, before I had it, I, you know, um, was working out 40 minutes a day, cardiovascular, had a really great exercise plan. And he, well, he doesn't said no, want me to do that. Well, he said no excessive exercise. You're going to have to find out from him exact. And you may be able to go to cardiac rehabilitation and do, do exercise under monitoring. Should you, should, you do, uh, and should you do something like, you know, if you're running on a <clears throat> treadmill or something and you collapse, yeah. you're going to get dinged up pretty good. But if you're on one of those, like, well, but stationary the thr- the bikes or something. Is, is bad times. You don't you'll die? Yeah. And so it, she needs what... She needs to go and talk to the doctor about exactly what is okay. I mean, on the beta blockers, nothing's going to happen. She's going to be fine. Mm. And the probability is you can exercise fairly normally, but you may want to sort of kick into that exercise program under monitored supervision. My prom date dropped Cardiac that. rehab. Yeah, those are usually different things than this, frankly. She just, uh, 
hot chick. Here's the deal. If she really had a risk yeah. of sudden death, they'd put a, a, what's called an implantable defibrillator in her. Ooh. Which put they, her in it. Put they, it in, in yeah, it. Yeah, they put the, it looks like a pacemaker. And your stuff, if it shuts down, it, it, it kicks it, on? It, it's like having a... a like, like the, the paddles? paddles? Yeah. Like having a crash card in you? In your, in your chest, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's what you do now for people that have real serious... So, so they put a, 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 what's it, a defibrillator, did you yeah, say? Yeah, it's called and, a plantable defibrillator. And they put it inside you, and if your heart stops... It socks you back. How about I get one of those anyway? It's an interesting idea, right? Well, what could it hurt? <laughs> I, I got a spare tire in my car. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. don't have to have tire problems to have a spare tire. Yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Mm. Well, what's wrong? I got some money. Well, go ahead. I'll go. I want one of those implantable defibrillators. And I want a vagina. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, here's the thing. As long as I'm under, you know, Might just well. do the whole thing. Just turn the penis inside out and form a vagina? No, I want to keep mine. Oh, you want a vagina and, and a penis? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, what do you think? Well, I thought you wanted the usual. Oh, no. Usual I'm going. Fare. I'm striking out on my own. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, get one of those. And then your heart stops and then it kicks on again. You know, Adam, I think you'd be lost if you actually had a vagina, man. Really? You That's don't right. Think, it, it, you, you wouldn't know how trouble? to handle it. You wouldn't know whether to stand up or sit down, buddy. You're right. I, and I probably have for sure have cramps. At least for cramps. Sure. At least cramps. At least. At least. And with my my eyebrows, those things could spread out. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have cramps in my brow. I think your first panic would be your first yeast infection. You would oh, know my God. To, oh, great I would be, morning. I would, I would be treating it with uh, TSP. <laughs> I would just be dumping like cleanser into myself. And just, I, I wouldn't even know what to do. What, what do you got? Uh, uh, that's a mixture. Uh, yeah, that's, um, <clears throat> that's lacquer thinner, uh, trisodium phosphate, and uh, Jiffy. <laughs> let's just put all in there. Let's try to clean it up. Figure it will work. All right, let's take ourselves a little uh, break. We got uh, the contenders in here tonight. Sergio, Latin Snake in here. Jonathan Reed also in here. Sunday night. Oh, man. Sunday night. Getting exciting. What's going on? Who's fighting this Sunday? Could it be Sergio? Let me think. Alfonso hasn't fought in a little while. Uh -oh. Maybe Alfonso's getting in there. With Sergio? Mm, nah, I, don't, I don't know. Sir, it's been a while for Sergio, too. Because Jesse and Peter fought most recently. Oh, this is going to be tough. Oh, man. But you can tell me this. <clears throat> Because I've said you can tell me this, even if you can't <laughs> okay. tell me. You can't I'm tell me nice. in real time the difference. Like, let's just say Jesse, who fought last week. Mm -hmm. Jesse uh, Brinkley fought last week and won. If he were to fight in this week's episode, not saying he is, but if he were to fight, how, how great a distance would that be between fights? Would it be a couple weeks or five no, days? No, it or? was uh, three to six days. Wow. Because, uh, I mean, it's like... You know, these guys, are they're not going, you know, three two-minute rounds. They're going five rounds. These are wars. I mean, your ribs are, are hurting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're beat up. You got a car accident. Yeah. I mean, you, you really, if you were, you know, if this was any other situation, you would take at least a couple months off before before you got back in. And these guys getting back in three to six days. Well, Ooh. it could have been as much as, like, uh, two weeks when there was more people, but now that there's, there's only four, the final four, it, it's right only three-day three day wow. difference. Yeah. Warriors, Drew. Do you hear me? Warriors. True warriors. Yeah? Yep. All right. And we'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. My daughter thinks she wants to get a heavy bag. Your daughter? Yes. Yeah, so maybe I'll go back mm. to her. That means she's angry. Mm. Yeah. Heavy bag's good. You just uh, yeah. whack away on that thing. That's what I'm thinking. You just walk in one day, you see her. I hate you, Dad. And she's bounding the crab. I hate you so much. Well, she's, <laughs> yeah, she's pawing at it. You find your oldest son humping it. Oh, please. All right. All right. I get you set up the good heavy bag. You know what's good? The heavy bags. The water. Water yeah. heavy bags. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Good on the hands. Talking to the uh, contenders tonight. Sergio Morris here tonight. Jonathan Reed is here tonight. Best show on TV. And I'm thinking uh, boxing is having a uh, little uh, resurgence because you have the contender. you got a primetime, successful boxing program. you got Cinderella Man coming out, which is a uh, mm -hmm. new, uh, new movie with Russell, uh, Crow. Russell Crowe. You had uh, Million, what's her? Dollar Baby. Million Dollar Baby wins the Academy Award. I, yeah. I, I passed a movie theater, and there was another boxing movie yeah. that was just out. It was like an art house theater. But Lemmings. It's getting. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah, and then Jack Johnson's story uh, was really popular. Oh, it was yeah, mm -hmm. yeah on television. Yeah, Jack Johnson. He was the uh, first Jewish accountant. 
No, no, it's your first black fighter. <laughs> He's <laughs> running around with it. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was. He was like uh, way before Muhammad Ali was uh, mouthing off. He mm -hmm. he was doing it, and that was bad. And he was with the white ladies, and, mm -hmm. and he was like they were arresting him, and it was all this crazy racial Shocking stuff. Him, man. And he was just he was just telling everyone to kiss his black ass. Uh -huh. And he was beating everybody up, and and we get and that was back when they would have these fights, where first off the ticket sales would be a hundred thousand people would show up. Wow. Oh, well, think about it. There's no TV, yeah. and there's no soccer, and there's no basketball, and there's no football, and there's right. no baseball, really, or just barely some baseball. There's really there's no sports. Right. You don't have a team. Biggest sport in the land is boxing. You get uh, Jack Johnson to hook up with, you know, Gentleman Jim, and next thing you know, it's in Reno, and you got 100,000 guys showing up. Wow. And everyone's, like, checking their guns as they come in, and it's 120 <laughs> degrees. And, I mean, and all the money you got was from the attendance. Wow. Of the actual fight. Wow. And it's it's going to be a 45 rounder. <laughs> How many rounds do they go? They would just go like 40 rounds. That was before rules, yeah. They didn't really have rules. They would just keep so going around. Or... Well, yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't beat him if he was on the ground. But, but until they somebody would... gave up, until somebody fell Yeah, out. you just had to sort of give up. And they, they, but there, there were just, the rounds would go into the 30s and 40s wow. and stuff. And the thing that was funny, too, is they had like sort of a rule, which is if you knock the guy out, now, if you knock a guy down now, you have to go to a neutral corner. You can't go to your own corner. You go to go to one of the other. How many corners in a square? Five? Four? <laughs> Just four? All right, so you, you have two to choose from. Sometimes you get hit, you have trouble finding a neutral sure. one. But you go to that one. They're color-coded, you know? <laughs> you go to that, and you hang out there. And the ref counts you, and he picks you up, and he wipes your gloves. He always wipes the gloves on his chest for some weird reason. And he says, uh, you okay? You want to continue? And the guy's always like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, fine. Like, like, like he was watching TV at home, and he just said, how are you feeling, Bert? Oh, I'm doing good. Feeling fine. And it, I, I, like, I like the guys who are a little outraged at your ass. A little indignant. What do you mean? I'm fine. Of course. I just got scraped off the canvas. So, it's, and then you walk forward, and the guy, you get about 10 seconds, 20 seconds to collect yourself. Back in the day, you got knocked down. The ref came and tended to you, but the guy stood right, right there. Of course. Yeah. And the over you. second the ref moved, he just pounded in the head again. He fell down again. You'd get up again. He'd, <laughs> pound you. He'd lean over the top of the ref and just whack you in the top of the head. You never got to get up. You'd get up. You'd get to one knee, and he'd just whack you again. He'd fall down again. That sort of makes sense. It was a fight. Yeah. All right. So anyway, Jack Johnson, yeah, legendary. Yeah. Turn of uh, probably uh, early 19, 1908, 1910, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Transporting the white women. Oh, yeah. Couldn't do it back then. Now, no problem. It's poor. My wife's white. I took her out of town all the time. No big deal. We got pulled Cross off. state lines? Took her into Nevada. No way. Yeah. Had her in the trunk of the car. I didn't need trouble. <laughs> we'll uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, Kate, who's 18. Kate? Hey. <clears throat> What's happening? Nothing. Um, first, I just want to let you guys know I really appreciate everything you do, and you guys are freaking awesome. It's great to just be able to talk to you guys. It's so cool. <laughs> Thanks. And, um, Talking Dr. to us, Drew, right? Yeah, I guess so. Like? All right. Yeah. Never know. Well, you watch <laughs> The Contender, Kate? No. You know what? I don't have time for TV. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's like saying I don't have time. You, you need to make time. Yeah, yeah. there for us. It's like, it's like saying I don't have time to brush my teeth or eat right. <laughs> it's so lame, but it's kind of true. I'm really busy. What are you doing? Um, well, I work and I'm a full time student. And okay. So. But yeah. you got a sex question at all? Right. Good times. Go ahead. Well, uh, before I even ask my question, Doctor Drew, you're such an inspiration. Um, I'm aspiring to become a midwife and open my own birthing center. So I really oh, like cool. to listen to you and all your advice and everything that you give to young females is really Great. inspiring. Excellent. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So anyways, so thank you. What do you, you do at a birthing me. center? You have babies. Uh, it's like all natural birth, like holistic no. healing. You know, it would be a tough gig janitor at the birthing center. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So up, it's a little messy. Yeah. yeah. We got a zygote and some placenta down here. We're going to need you in here. Nice. <laughs> oh. Laundry, laundry would be worse. Oh. oh, yeah. All right, anyway. How about people just go to a hospital and have their kids like uh, human beings, you know? Well, it actually dates back to, like, way long ago. That's how things right. are done, you know. So like does, uh, so does uh, amputating a guy with no anesthetic <laughs> and uh, putting tar on the end of his limb. Yeah. That dates back yeah. to the Civil War. Thing yeah. is, is we, we've now outgrown that because we have hospitals and technology right. and no, stuff hey, that plugs in. I, I totally love technology. Yeah. I have nothing against that. I just... For people that are suitable for it and, you know, for the pregnant women that qualify for it and want to go for the more natural way, I think that it's a perfect idea. All right. I'll tell you what I, my idea is now that I think about it. Oh. You know they have that plane 
that simulates zero gravity. Yes. It's like the, they call it the vomit comet. The birthing centers in, in that. In that plane. Yeah. Yeah, because zero gravity, that would be the best place to have your kid. Well, they do it underwater to sort of simulate the same thing. I know, but then the kid's going to drown, yeah, you know? Yeah, what are you going to do? You do it in that plane. You see that plane? It's when they, when they film astronaut movies, they'll do it in those, those, those planes. They yeah. go up, they go up, and they arc down, and for like two minutes, you have zero gravity. You're just doing cartwheels in the air. If you could time it, so that your wife actually crapped the kid out during the arc. Be awesome seeing the kid pour into zero gravity. And I got to believe that kid would be better off. It, uh, he'd probably have believe. much higher self esteem. Think of the trauma, though, when the arc ends. Yeah. But imagine that. He's in like the fifth grade. Where were you born? County USC. Where were you born? Outer space. <laughs> <laughs> that kid be the hit of the fifth grade. What she want, by the way? Let's hear her. Oh, anyway. She just reminded me of something. I don't know. All right, Kate, what's Kate? going on? What's the question? Okay, thanks. Um, well, hey, I was dating this guy for about two and a half years, and um, I was his first girlfriend, first everything, and we were kind of like high school sweethearts, and we recently had a split, which was um, kind of hard on us, but we're trying to do the friends thing. It wasn't a real clean cut, and um, we actually slept together a couple nights ago, and it's not, the friends thing isn't working out, but we're trying to live by it. It's just really hard, so why, I don't really know why, what you guys well, no, wait, Why are you being friends? If you're sleeping together, why, why isn't something more happening? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I know this sounds like, you know, typical guy sort of a thing, but he really is, I mean, we've, um, he's, a, he's a really amazing guy, very good person, and so, and we have a lot of history together. We've been through a lot and everything, and there's that tension, you know, that sexual tension between us that any couple would experience, especially after a breakup. But we have the All right, so, but well, again, why aren't you back in? Yeah, why don't you just get back together with him? You like yeah, him, you have sex with him? On, it's all on him. He's, right, he doesn't want to no. get back in. So that's it. Well, no, he's confused. Not, he's, no. No, it's, he's, he's confused, and, like, he, he doesn't want to be vulnerable. vulnerable Kate, and, Kate, don't believe that BS. He doesn't want to go back in. That's it. If, if he wanted he even the slightest vulnerable. bit, he'd be in. By the way, here's a, you always know when a guy's BSing when he starts saying stuff that sounds like it came out of a chick's mouth. Right now, I just need some time. Some I'm feeling a little vulnerable. You know, I just want to, I got to be alone with my thoughts. They're telling I've you what you want to hear. Somebody. Yeah. yeah, whenever you hear, whenever you hear that, that's just BS for, I'd like to nail you and I'd like to nail this uh, right. other chick I go to junior college with. Yeah, exactly. I don't really want to be tied down. Right. And it's also sort of code for, you're good enough to nail, but you're not really uh, girlfriend material. For me anymore. For me anymore. Yeah. But don't don't worry, I still, I still like the sex part. Right. Here's the thing. I want to break up with you. Uh, my penis wants to keep uh, things going, and uh, he rules the roof. Well, no, no. And if you cooperate with both, then fantastic. Right. So you cooperate with both, Kate, given exactly what he, what he and his penis want. Yeah, no guy, no guy actually really has thoughts about. I just need time, you know. No, he's uh, he's I out. need, I need to, I need to go to Adam. Sort of now. like a hit me on the hip type of relationship. Right. When when I want it, I'll call yourself. Right. right. That's right. Yeah. Or whenever we're around, magically one thing leads to another. Yeah. yeah don't be around. Okay. Make the break. break. And, I mean, and, come on, wake up here. Andy's coming over. By the way, that's that's bad. True. You ever go to a chick's house without wanting sex? Under the age of uh, 30. <laughs> Seriously, be honest. Be honest. See if you think. See if you think about that. No. no. That's right. Kate, you go, you're you, better off watching TV. That's right. And, that's and, right. And here's, here's the thing. It ends up screwing the chicks up because chicks get attached to guys when they're having sex. They just do. No matter how up in their head they are physically. Well, unless they're, they're trauma in. survivors. They can, they can use it just like sex. Yeah. But even they get even this doesn't work out for anybody. Eventually, yeah. Yeah, someone like Kate is smart. She's up in her head a little bit too much. She's right. still in love with the guy. Her thing is something's better than nothing. At least well, I got some attachment to him. And she believes what he tells her, too. I mean, that, right. that, because that's what she'd be doing if she were behaving like this. Yeah, and, and by the way, do the math. He's on top of you twice a week, but he's got to get his head together before he can get back together with you. What's that? What's what is he, that? No, if he was into you. He's already in. He's already in. He just got to get his head together. He's not interested. All right. Wait a minute. I feel bad. Kate? Uh-huh? You can do better than this guy. Okay. Well, um, I, I totally get what you guys are saying, but, I mean, just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a history or whatever, so I think you better understand. Um, yeah, I don't want to know. Nothing worse than hearing someone crap all over my good points <laughs> with their history, with their facts, Come on. and their information. Should we hear it? No. Nah. She's fine. Right. Get away from this guy. 
He's a good guy, but he's got a boner. See, see, I don't, I can't, I good can't, guy with a boner. The reason I'm interested, because in my mind, there's no history she could provide that would make any difference. All so right. I'm curious. Good point. Good point. All right. Good point. Kate, go ahead. What do you got? Okay, I'm sorry to make me crap on your good point there. Well, go ahead. Give right, it a we, shot. Because we can't think of any history that would crap on it, so go ahead. Okay. Well, you'll, you'll probably be able to shoot this down, but we'll see. Um, I actually was pregnant and had a miscarriage from him, mm -hmm. and after that happened, just emotionally, everything kind of got weird between us. Yeah. And um, things happened, and, and the breakup was a mutual thing. It wasn't, and it wasn't because of the miscarriage, but I think that that definitely kind of put the ball in motion. Yeah, you know, get open the door for him to slip out. Yeah, opportunity. So, but now, why aren't you back together? We're we are working on it. We're trying to get back together, and we took the wrong route, definitely. No, you so told we, me he wasn't into it. You told me he's. You said to us that he's not open to it. Right, yeah. not right now. He wants to in the future, but he's scared right now or whatever. Oh, okay. but, oh, stop he's lying. believing yeah, that. Stop <laughs> believing that crap. Oh, All right, baby. You want to follow in uh, Dr. Drew's footsteps? The uh, first thing you got to do is knock off the denial. Second thing, start banging candy stripers. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. Let's go, baby. All right. Break it down. Out there you break Come it on. down. Come on. Let's get a hand in now. Let's go. Let's break it down. All right, gentlemen. And I use that term loosely. All right. <laughs> Boxing, not a team sport. They don't get to break it down that much, you know? I'm sure that they do. They, yeah, but they got the gloves on, so, you know, it doesn't make yeah, that good, the, uh, you know, the, uh, good noise. The, uh, They're a coach. The coach. Yeah. Yeah. Thump it down. Thump it down. I'll tell you, the guy who's on uh, the contender, the uh, coach, the trainer, Tommy Gallagher, <laughs> was a guy I met. When I went to a Gleason's gym in New York and did something for the Man Show, and he was my trainer. Wow, he's awesome. I mean, yeah, he's what always a, cussing. Oh, it never stops cussing. It was great for TV because it's just like <laughs> beep, 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 and that's just when he's like pouring cereal. <laughs> and the, and the kids, it's, not, it's not even during a fight. It's a, you can do the math though. It's like you got to beat the beep out of this guy. And he's just yell. Everyone's yelling at the poor guy. You know, most time fighters, I get they get, get to go in the corner. Maybe their dad or their trainer yells at them. Uh, in the contender, everyone's yelling at him. Sly's on one side yelling at him. Half the other guys that are uh, hoping they lose are yelling at him. Tommy Gallagher's yelling at him. I always like. Uh, I was just watching uh, the uh, fight, the uh, Chico Corrales fight we we're talking about uh, over the weekend, and uh, and these trainers. Uh, they're a little uninspiring, like especially with the Mexican translator. Yeah. It's like the guy's, yeah, like, blah, 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 and the guy's like, come on, you're not punching enough. <laughs> you got to do more punching. Stop letting him hit you. It's like, no ass, Sherlock. Uh, that's, that's, that, it, 50 years in the fight game for, uh, for and, and all you come up with is uh, you got to punch more? Yeah. And it's always funny because the guy, the, I think the same guy does the uh, Spanish translation for everyone. He always sounds like he's whining. Come on, you're not punching enough. You have to punch more. It's like he's whining the whole time. I don't think these guys are whining. I think he's just doing that. At, at least those translators are better than the African ones. Those are, I mean, they say like a whole paragraph and he just says, um, block left hook. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he's hitting you too much. You have to hit him more. I was like it too when the guys don't know what round it is and stuff. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Start trying now. All right, let's take ourselves a uh, little break. Drew, can you imagine if this show had a translator? Oh boy. Oh man. Like, uh, Adam says, "Stop blaming your father." <laughs> All right, let's take a little break. We'll be right back after this. Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew talking to some contenders tonight. Jonathan Reed is here. Sergio, the Latin Snake, Morris here tonight. You like saying that, huh? I do. It's a good. <laughs> it's it's a good name, you know. Thank you. And uh, like I said, there's uh, there's a lot of lot of bad nicknames out there, and there's a lot of lot of ones where guys I don't know guys don't copyright theirs or something. They they use a couple guys got the same same nicknames. Latin Snake, though, is nice. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's, and 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 the other thing that's good too is uh, Sergio is he's he's he is uh, like a serpent in there. He's uh, he's long, he's lean, he moves, uses defense, uses upper body, slips, punches very nicely, yeah, even cool. leaning against the ropes. <clears throat> fights, I love leaning against the ropes. Fights in a, I feel so comfortable. Fights in a professional style, you know, doesn't have both hands up and elbows tucked in. Well, hands, yeah. what's that? Hands. Yeah, he'll have his right hand up, his left left thumb right in the ass. <laughs> really intimidates the other guy. You're not going to get hit with that jab. Yeah, I wouldn't want it. No, it's like this. The, the other hand is down, and they're sliding. 
use, using the head movement instead of just absorbing stuff with, uh, huh. with their forearms. Yeah. yeah, it can burn you, though. That's why That's why they fight, Drew. That's why. That's why. Yeah. All right. So, uh, anyway, Contender, uh, Sunday nights, NBC, 8 o'clock, I'm still on TV. And let's speak to Drew. I'm telling you, you are up on your feet when you're watching this show. You're yes. nervous. You're pacing. And yeah, really uh, on, on your feet. It really is. Man, my wife doesn't, uh, doesn't care for boxing, per se, but she loves the show. Screaming at the Latin snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sarah, you know it helps. I shadow box in front of the TV set while she's <laughs> doing it. That's what she's screaming. Get the f out of the way! I want to watch this show. And then the problem is, is I get the TiVo remote, so it's boom, hit the pause, pow, right up in front of the TV, <laughs> throwing the crazy punches. <laughs> Sarah. Yeah. Uh, twenty years old. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Oh, well, it says twenty here. What's up? <laughs> Almost, just about. Um, I wanted to say that it was really cool that you had the guts to say, um, I think it was Tuesday, um, how the girl was, quote, crapping out kids. She's the same age as me, and, you know, and it was good that you guys, like, kind of made her realize that. Um, yeah. Well, we don't, uh, you know, people people look at it, you know, they, they don't like us getting down on the moms that are having three and four kids before their 18th birthday with uh, three or four guys and no means of support. But to me, that's child abuse. You know, right. on behalf of the kid, we should be talking about right. this. Or, and and the kids that haven't been that born yet. Cool. What's that? I've never heard anyone say that before, like have the guts, so that was cool. And like my mom is like Ooh. that with drugs and alcohol and young and everything, so. All right. Um, well, the listen, other thing, I had a question. Listen to the show. Yeah. Your mom, well, your mom was young and a drug addict? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was bad, but um, I was removed from there when I was seven, so. Yeesh. Child Protective Services? Uh, no, my grandmother actually took me in. Wow, and she raised you? Yeah. All right. That was good, huh? Yeah, it was really good. I'm doing a lot better now. We can tell, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Have, like, self-esteem and trust issues and everything. Yeah, but, of course. Anyway, so um, I have a boyfriend that is, like, you know, probably about two and a half years he joined the Army Reserves, and so now he's in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, because in like a month he's going to go to Iraq. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm going to visit him next weekend, and I was wondering if there's anything sexual, non-sexual, whatever, that, you know, would be memorable to him. Mm -hmm. Have that, you been you know, having sex? like a yeah. whole year that he could think <clears throat> about or something. Uh, uh. Yeah, give him a hustler. <laughs> <laughs> a what? Have you, been, have you been having sex with him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what could you do? Uh, well, threesome that would that would stick in his craw no, pretty good. Like he could take that, that with him. <laughs> well, hey, he may never come back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dress in one of those black gowns, like them. You mean like a French maid or something no, like that? No, oh, like no, a burka, like the Middle Eastern one. Like yeah. Ooh. Yeah, ooh. There you go. Fantasy. Nasty burka sex. You know, they're not they're not allowed to do that type of stuff. So no, no lingerie under that. That's my yeah. No, I. I I don't know, though, because you may not want to give him the message that there's a hot body you underneath that You don't want to develop a taste for that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. Here's, uh, here's, I'm, I'm trying to think. You could, uh, hmm, give him something visual. Like, uh, he's got to gotta look at you naked, you know? Yeah. Where do you get to have sex, by the way, at Fort Bragg? Oh, I'm staying in a hotel, and he has, like, a, that weekend off because it's right before he leaves, so... Oh. So you know, here's the deal. Don't, by the way, don't leave the hotel room I, the whole week. I'm the That'll guy. Be. I'm the guy who checks into the room after they leave. Ugh. Just oh, I'm exhausted. Plop down on the bed, face oh. first. The ladder's like, oh, it smells like a lot of ass in here. What's going on? I'm all, I, this is what goes on. I'm now convinced in every hotel room I check into. This guy's going. Guy's going out. Maybe never to return. Twenty year old uh, horny girl's going to spend a long weekend with him. Just boff. Just a boff fest for uh, two and a half days straight, and then I come in. But don't you think they should just stay in the room, eat in the room, stay in the room? He'll remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah don't leave the room. I mean, you know, you could always. Well, what, what have you not done with him already? Yeah. What? What? What's left? What? What? Do you, what haven't you done? I mean, you know. Well, see, I'm not like that type of girl that, like, the self-esteem thing, I'm not the type of girl that, like, will normally, like, dress up or anything like that. Like, I'd go a little bit, but I wouldn't do, like, a threesome or anal. No, he, you don't worry about that. Don't do anything like Jonathan that. Jonathan was asking about anal. I hate to say it, but that's what he meant. No? Not on the menu? Oh. Oh, you understand? You. Guy, no, th no thumbs up? The guy could, uh, guy could uh, get, uh, get a car bomb first night of patrol. Guy without any okay, anal, he'll be fine. Just, it, Sarah, all, think all, about you, it. all he'll want to see from you is enthusiasm. If you're actually turned on by him, 
Yeah. He'll get but if you want to, if you want to sear something into his memory bank, you got to leave the lights on. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do that? Like Sarah. Sarah. When we are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, when you guys yeah. are eating. Okay. Yeah. That's when. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh -oh. Sarah. It's simple. Talk dirty. Um. Yeah. Talk I dirty. See. Talk dirty. Leave the light on. Okay. I'll just get some guts. Be, yeah, get be, some if guts. You, if you're actually turned on, he'll he'll like uh, that. I think you, and Sarah, you you you're in some kind of shell. You got to come out of your shell. That's right. That's right. She's uh, and and it's a bad sign when you go like you got to turn the lights on. You leave when we're doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got himself an uptight broad. Yeah, he needs some visual to take with him. He got to take something with yeah, you. Yeah. Because yeah, that's why you got to turn the guys, light on. Guys need the visual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Where are you? And by about? the way, if you're going to do a lot of beating off, doing it in sand is the way to go. You know what I mean? No. I mean, those, guys, those guys over there in Iraq, it's just one big pot, one big ashtray sand over there. Sand is good? Well, it's like, you know, once in a while you hawk a loogie, but it just goes in the sand or the dirt, just yeah. rolls right up and goes away. I see. It's not like it's on a gym floor or anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it gets soft. It's like cat litter. Yeah, what you don't, the worst thing, the worst beat off environment is shag. Yeah. Shag carpet. Yes. Okay? Yes. But best, sand. Yeah. Yeah. God knows what uh, we've littered the desert with out there. Oh. Uh -huh. Let's uh, take ourselves a uh, little break out here with uh, Jonathan and Sergio from The Contender. Best show on TV, 8 o'clock, Sunday night, NBC. Quit monkey and Sergio. Yeah. Take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, that's the show. That's the week. I want to thank Sergio for coming in here tonight. Latin Snake. Welcome. Pleasure. Jonathan Reed. Everyone can just go to uh, www.what, Drew? Yahoo.contender.yahoo.com. Yeah. That vote, is correct. Vote, vote for, for Jonathan Reed. Yeah. Five kids, everybody. A lot of mouths to feed in the Reed family. So get over there, put our vote in and for whoever's friend, Jonathan interested, Reed. My, my website is www.sergeamoreboxing.com. And uh, we will uh, give some thanks out. We thank uh, Engineer Anderson for doing a great job. Phone screener Brian for doing a great job all week. Junior, 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 junior producer Lauren for doing a fantabulous job. Michelle for doing a great job on the engineering. And uh, Engineer Chris as well. And also producer Ann. So, until next time, this is Adam, the Brillo Head Corolla. For uh, <laughs> Moscow Medic. For the Moscow Medic, Dr. Drew, saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the, the, the producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.